In 2012, Titanic Foundation got involved in the restoration of the Harland and Wolf headquarter building and drawing office. At that stage, the building was at risk and parts of the ceiling had actually fallen in within the drawing offices. So we took on a temporary lease to try and save the building and restore it. One of the ideas was that we turned it into a boutique hotel, preserving the heritage of the building at the same time and having public access to the key parts of the heritage. So the amazing thing about this building is that it actually reflects the development of the shipyard itself. It's nearly like an archaeological dig. Whenever you look at the drawing offices built in the 1880s, uh, parts of the building built in the early 1900s and then the rest of it into the 1920s, it's really charting the rise and growth of Harland and Wolfe in to one of the largest shipyards in the world. This project was the first heritage enterprise project that we funded um, at £5 million um, UK-wide, so that was very different for us. The other pretty unique aspect of this project is that this is one of the last remaining buildings uh, in this part of Belfast with a unique connection to industrial East Belfast. I first became associated with this grand building in September uh, 1959. This building was the hub of the Hardenwolf Empire from this headquarters building. Uh, the livelihoods of 50,000 people was directed. Everything that has been done to the building now communicates what it was like in its heyday. The experience of the hotel will, will be very unique. We have savoured a lot of the architecture and the, and the design and the magic of what would have been incorporated in bits of Titanic. It's not just about being a hotel or a Titanic hotel with a bit of branding. There's a whole story to be told about the shipbuilding and Belfast as part of it. It was a huge challenge. Uh, obviously we had to understand the existing building, how each of the spaces worked, the historic significance of, of each of the spaces, such as the drawing offices, such as the Perry Room, such as the Andrews Room, um, and the telephone exchange. Those are hugely important spaces that, that, that we, we didn't want to, to change. We also have to fit all the practical elements of a modern day hotel operation in, into the building. So there was, there was a constant challenge between a hotel operator and what they needed for a hotel to work, but also in terms of the history of the building and protecting that. There's so many different parts of the building that are special. Probably uh, my most favourite would be the telephone exchange. As you walk into the building, there's this magnificent uh, curved wooden room uh, with the etched glass and that was the original telephone exchange. So the night that Titanic sank, this is where the telegrams came to, to say what had happened. The building is listed uh, as part of a whole series of buildings um, throughout the, the Titanic quarter. There's a number of listed buildings, a number of scheduled monuments. So the first thing we look at if we're looking at a listed building is we consider the significance of that building. Uh, so we consider what's important about the building. Uh, and what therefore should be protected. So we've discovered things like some of the original flooring, which is very similar to what was used on the Titanic and some of the other liners. We are looking at things like original windows, original doors and detailing. We're looking at plaster work, a lot of these items that have to be repaired uh, and put back as they were. It's a fantastic job to be involved with. It's the jewel in the crown really of, of all of the other assets that are around here. The riveted plate girder construction uh, used for the, the, the main building structure is obviously imported from the works that were ongoing in Harden and Wolf and it, it's, it's great to see those in action as a building structure, not only a ship. I think what makes these buildings special is the amount of historical elements that are still on show today for people to look at. The challenge is to keep some kind of continuity with the design scheme whilst keeping some of the historical elements in the heritage rooms. When we started to consider the interior scheme for the project, there was a huge amount of um, archive photography that we could source from, um, which we took a lot of influence from. You'll notice that a lot of the heritage rooms were based on late Victorian and Edwardian periods and we've tried to show people what that would have looked like back in the heyday of the early 1900s. In particular, 
the uh, flax flower symbol that you'll see on the ceilings in the drawing offices and it also appears on the main staircase and on the balustrade. Um, and this was a symbol of the industry, the booming industry in the early 1900s in Belfast. A unique aspect about this project is the fact that not only will it be a hotel but it will also be part museum, so we will actually have artefacts on display. Throughout the process we've been working with a number of artefacts within different collections and there's some absolutely fantastic star items. A lot of people always think about Titanic but one of my favourite ships was actually Canberra and we have whole rigging plans and sea trial notes for Canberra. So what we've done is we've actually integrated uh, display cases and drawers throughout the meeting rooms so within the whole room you can open a drawer and discover artefacts associated with the drawing office. We have an accounting table which is similar to one that would have been used in drawing office too. We've had it restored. Within it will be display cases and we only heard yesterday we're actually going to get draftsman tools to be displayed in that so it really gives people a sense of the work that happened here. Outside those rooms we've got what we call the corridor of conversation or the corridor of power where we've recreated a, a scene where a man is meeting a boy and the boy is not supposed to be in the corridor. So this man is speaking to him about, get these plans out of here, you shouldn't be here. But the idea is that you read the poem over four panels from one side and you get the man's perspective, the director, but you read it the other side and you get the boy's perspective. So it's a nice little play on the sense of place again to give people a, a, an understanding of the hierarchy within, within the drawing offices. This room we're in now, the presentation room, for me, this is one of the most special rooms because this room was all about uh, showing off how great Harlan Wolf were to clients and the discussions that must have happened within this building and that within this room specifically, you'd love to be a fly on the wall to, to be able to hear them. I think people visiting the hotel will get a sense of being part of the next chapter for these buildings that it's a continuation of the history of Harland and Wolf, where once floating hotels, floating luxury hotels were designed, we now have a beautiful boutique hotel in its place. And I think that's a connection that they will really appreciate. I cannot wait to see what this whole building looks like. I cannot wait to hear people in it again. The magic of, of seeing the space restored, I suppose for me that's the real day where there's, where there's the satisfaction that we've achieved what we set out to do. I'm really excited about this building because I think it's going to be the number one hotel in the city. And not only that, but a, a, a prime tourist destination right at the, the, the centre of Titanic. It's a very historic building, it's a unique building. I think the project has a huge significance for Belfast. We've been very lucky to be part of and to bring this building back to life again and, and to allow the public in and to see the building and experience the spaces. We're excited because we know what, what local people in East Belfast, um, how they feel about the building and there is a real connection um, of local people and their distant relatives who worked in the shipyard. This is in part also a, a museum, it's a living heritage experience. Being the last person to leave this building as a working building in October 1989, I closed those doors with a lot of sadness. Now to see the building brought back to uh, the way generally it was, it, it is absolute magic, it's superb.